In this video, we'll discuss how we can get a little more information about autonomous equations to get a better idea of how to sketch their solutions. So phase line analysis gives us an idea of what this is going to do and how it's going to behave over time, but it doesn't give us really anything else about the shape of the graph or how it's going to sort of actually get to those economically stable equilibrium solutions. If you want to look at shape, we had this idea way back in Calc 1, we can look at the second derivative solution. So we have our autonomous equation, dy dt equals f of y. And now I want to compute the second derivative of this to let me look at concavity. So if I want to find the second derivative, well, this is just the derivative of dy dt. But dy dt is f of y. This is the derivative in t of f of y. How do we compute this derivative? Well, y is a function of t. This is a straightforward chain rule calculation. So I'm going to get the derivative of f, so f prime plugging in y times the derivative of y on the inside with respect to t, but that's just f of y. So I get f prime of y times f of y. So if f prime of y times f of y is positive, that means the second derivative is positive, so my graph is concave up. And if it's negative, my graph is concave down. So we can basically state something like this as the following. If f of y and f prime of y have the same sign, that is they're either plus plus or minus minus, then that product is going to be positive, the solution will be concave up. If they have opposite signs, then it's concave down. And what this can really tell us is that between each pair of equilibrium solutions, there's going to be some sort of inflection point in terms of y, where the graph will flip from being concave up to concave down, or vice versa. Why is that the case? Well, let's draw a sketch of this function f here. So in general, this f will be some polynomial type curve. So the graph of it will look something like, you know, okay, it goes down through here, it comes up through here, maybe this one just touches the axis, and then it goes off this way. Now, say we look at some point that's in here. Well, in here, f of y is positive, because the graph is above the axis. But we also have the f prime of y is positive, because the slope here is positive. Therefore, for this y value, the graph will be concave up. If we look now, say, somewhere over here, we now have f of y positive because the graph is still above the axis, but f prime is now negative because the graph is decreasing or going downward. Therefore here, the graph will be concave down. And the main reason behind this works actually ties back to Rolle's theorem way back in Calc 1. Because between any two equilibrium solutions, say these two here, there's going to be a maximum value. At this point, f prime is zero, that's my inflection point because my, that's a local maximum there. It's going to be inflection point because the derivative is going to change sign going from positive on this side to negative on this side. And that point there is going to be my inflection point in the solution. So if we were to flip this into an actual graph of the sketch, I could draw my phase line over here with my axes. We had these equilibrium solutions with plus, minus, plus, plus, minus as my signs. And we had these critical points for, for function f that were like, there was a critical point somewhere in here. There was one in here, one in here. And those are where the graph's going to change concavity. So we'll get our equilibrium solutions. I'll draw these orange lines dashed through the middle here. They won't be exactly in the middle, but they'll be relatively close. It'll depend on solving out the equation, which can be tricky depending on the degree of that curve. Now we can draw some graphs. These are all going to be concave down. Now up here, this is decreasing, which means if I start way up here, at this point, my graph is concave down. So it's going to be concave down like this. It's going to hit an inflection point at this orange line, flip to being concave up, and then flatten out. For this case, I'm increasing. So on this first, I'm going to be concave up. I will hit the orange line, flip to being concave down, and go like that. And the same goes for all these regions. Again, here, increasing, so concave up, hit the line, concave down asymptote like that. And then these are just going to be concave up. So that's really the picture there, is the fact that the sign of the derivative and the function itself for this autonomous equation talk about the concavity of the solution. And that means that basically in every these, one of these regions, the concavity is going to flip at some point inside. If you start close to the thing, you're going to be concave up and flip to concave down or vice versa, depending on which way the solution is actually going at this point. 